Hey everyone, we are here live at Career Cafe at West Campus. And so I want to thank you for joining us here with what we call Cyber Career Cafe. That is where we hop on live so that you can join us if you are not here on campus. So today we are bringing you Cyber Career Cafe featuring interview tips. And so we are going to be answering questions about things you need to know about how to prepare for that interview in three phases, the before, the during, and the after. And here today to answer those questions is, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, I am Dr. Joseph Gall. I am the Academic Nursing Dean for Critical Care here at Pima Community College. So that means I have nursing, respiratory therapy, radiology, technology, and surgical technology. So, so I'm going to kind of take you through the, the three steps of the interview process. And we do have a board over here that uh, Renee was showing you a little bit here. But let's talk about the pre-interview phase. This is probably the most critical portion of the whole interview process that nobody really spends a lot of time doing. Uh, the pre-interview phase is when you're going to data collect, you're going to analyze and draw conclusions on, on information pertaining to that particular program or to that particular company. So you're going to do your research. You're going to do your research. Mm -hmm. You want to know the mission. You want to know the values of that institution. want to know their website as well because that's where their 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 customer base is is going to you don't want to go in the taco bell saying i know how to do engineering because it doesn't quite fit so how this works is you're going to do the research base and you're going to start taking notes on there because you want to know their value why is that important because you're going to prepare your attributes and how your attributes or your skill set fit into their value. And that's what you're going to be discussing during the interview process. You want to show them that you fit in their culture. Because the interview process is basically a discussion. It's an, an, it's an exchange process. You want to determine if, if not only you're going to fit in their organizational culture, but that culture fits with your value systems. But that all happens in the pre-interview phase. You want to definitely know how you're going to fit in there and if you even fit in there. Because you may not like the culture of the organization and say, this is not going to be a place of work that I want to sit in. Also, you want to know as well, and this, and this is a basic thing that nobody does, call the HR department of that, that organization and you want to ask them, what is the interview process? Who am I going to meet with? Is this a panel interview? Is this an individual interview? Is there three steps in the interview process? What are those particular processes? Because you want to know who, who the ultimate hiring authority is, because that's how, that is who you ultimately have to impress. The rest of it is just gatekeepers from one step to the other. So you want to have a game plan for each of those levels. In, if it's a person that is a one-on-one -on -one and they're the hiring authority, it's going to typically be not as structured as everything else would be. So you want to go in to engage in a conversation. You want to get to know the interviewer. You want him to get to know him, he or, he or she to get to know you. And it's more of an engagement of, of discussions. But remember, your game plan. My values align with their values. My attributes align with their attributes. These are the problems that they're encountering based upon their strategic planning. This is how I can help them achieve that strategic plan. In other words, my, attribu my attributes will benefit your organization in this way. 
How would you recommend that somebody practices and prepares for that interview? Sure. So one of the best things to do is your learning institution may have a thing like this, the Career Cafe. Get out there and and these folks are here from the industry to understand the, the skills, uh, key points, and they can help you to, to refine that practice and to begin to practice those particular things. There are, in, there are individuals such as me that will actually apply to jobs just to get the practice. It's kind of weird, I know, but, uh, but that's how you learn what you can and cannot do, how part of a handshake that you're going to make, making appropriate eye contact, all of that good stuff. you got to practice those things. If you don't want to go to that extent, find colleagues and family members that will give you honest feedback. Mm -hmm. And you do want to have honest feedback. Mm -hmm. So... How important would you say it is to prepare at least one question for when it comes time for your interview? Sure. So during the interview process, you're engaging, right? Mm -hmm. One of the worst mistakes that you can ever make is go into an interview without a question. Mm -hmm. At least one question. And I'm not talking about a generic question. How do you like working here? Okay. You want to have a detailed, specific question year is to increase our sales by 10 percent so one of the questions that i would ask is so your strategic goal number one is to increase your sales by 10 percent mm -hmm. what methods have have you found beneficial and what methods of challenge are you finding mm -hmm. see that focuses on okay they know my company they've read into my company and and they're looking at the, the pros and cons when they come back, that's going to lead to your next discussion. Yeah. Because then what happens is, oh, so you've been having challenges in increasing sales by 10% by doing this. Well, in my previous job, I increased sales by 15% by doing this. So I hear you giving a lot of examples that are quantified. So let's get to the during the interview phase. When somebody asks a question and you're giving your response, how important is it to give those examples and even quantify those examples? Can you elaborate a little bit sure. more? So the interviewee should be prepared to, to demonstrate to the, the interviewer or the panel, whatever that process is at that point, that, that, that you can justify your skill set within their particular needs of that organization. Most businesses function on a quantitative basis, and that means numbers. I gotta show that my numbers are good. But in a healthcare environment, per se, they may be more qualitative in nature. In other words, how does that feel? Okay? So how do I care about people? Um, what kind of soft skills do I have, particularly that, that would align that? So how that works is that you need to know your audience. So, you, so again, in the pre-interview phase, you want to know who's at that table. So if, if, if the head of, of caring is going to be at the table, I want to show how my caring soft skills fit into that organization and how I'm just going to make, make their patients feel that they are the most extraordinary people in the world. And I'm going to give them examples of that. But if I'm in a business industry, and I'm talking about sales, I'm talking about productivity, I'm talking about, about how to get more clients, you want to show that in a quantitative measure so that they can relate that based upon numbers in the, in the language of business. Great. Okay, so last phase is after the interview. So according to the board here, it talks about sending the thank you note. Talk a little bit more about that. Very good. So you have to be very careful about this because some, some organizations will view that as, as being complicit. Some organizations expect it. So this 
questions and questions that you might want to ask uh, the HR department in the free interview phase. Um, hey, do they appreciate or expect me to follow up at the end, or or would you would you recommend that I not do that? You don't have to take their answer for it, but it gives you that. So what I typically do is I feel that out during during the interview process. Mm -hmm. If I have a person who's very closed in nature, very systematic, very proper, uh, not much joking around, I would typically probably make a phone call at the end, not an email, and, and basically want to review the data with that particular individual. Hi, John. It was a pleasure meeting with you. My name is Joe. I met last week with you or yesterday, maybe this morning. If you, if you remember that I kind of had the high, uh, that I was able to turn out a high uh, or increase my sales by 15% during our interview and I explained how that worked. I'm going to tell you how that will benefit your your organization during our conversation. You and I talked about how that you have this gap going on. This is how I can fill that particular gap. It's a very short conversation. Thank you very much. Remember me type conversation, and then that's it. If it's a panel interview, you typically should think about doing perhaps a short email burst of that. Basically saying thank you for your time. Uh, here are my key attributes. This is how it'll help you, and then that's about it. Mm -hmm. There are others that you don't do any of that at all. The first, the the old days of where I'm going to stand on the on my front doorstep of the organization until they give me that job is kind of going away. Is there a particular timeline that individuals should follow as far as when to follow up with that HR department to ask, you know, I haven't heard anything about, you know, whether or not I got the job? Sure. So this is a question that you might want to incorporate in the interview process. You want to know the next steps. So when can I expect hearing um, some response back? from you. Is it a day? Is it two days or, or whatever? I've even gone as far in my interview process to say, I'm going to send you a follow-up email in about a day just reminding you that I'm here preparing them. Mm -hmm. So they're going to get that. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't hear anything back in a matter of, of maybe a week, you need to call the HR department. Mm -hmm. And because some institutions do not have a good practice of following up with people. And you don't want to be waiting out there because time is money. You want a job. Mm -hmm. So for, for your own information, it takes about 10 applications or resumes to get about one job interview. And that goes all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, so you're going to be busy. If one institution is not going to give you that time of day, you may not want to work there. Mm -hmm. It takes about 10 interviews to get about one job off. Mm -hmm. And that's your ultimate goal, is that job off. Mm -hmm. That's when you begin to start talking the finer details of things, is that job off. One thing that, that I recommend not asking during a job interview process is, how much and what am I doing and all that stuff because that basically says that you didn't do your research. Yep, absolutely. These are great tips and again, if you want to get more information and tips about the interview process, resumes, cover letters, keep an eye out online here for our cyber